Well, good morning, dear friends from Hampi, India. I'm at the Malavanta Peak. This is a, one of the best places to watch the sunrise here in Hampi. You can see the these beautiful rock formations that are jutted up around these rocks that have been perched here for well, thousands of years. This is part of a temple complex that have been that's been here since Hampi was a fortified city. So the chanting you hear behind me goes on 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Uh, the folks that chant, they work in three hour shifts and the chanting never stops. It goes on and on and on all day long, every day, 24 hours a day. There are a lot of things that you'll find sort of ubiquitous across India. One of those is being chai. Indians love their chai in the morning and usually they'll have one or two to get their day started. Chai in India, you know, contrary to what is served in the U.S., it's tiny little cups, small portions, and usually made um, in these sort of big kind of like um, cooking vessels. And, and uh, it's just heavily spiced with lots of milk and uh, it's fantastic. Well, this is the, uh, the complex called the Queen's Bath. So back in the day, uh, when the queen wanted a, a spa day for herself, she would make her way to this area and enjoy the opulence that only a queen can be provided. You have to imagine this whole area being filled with rose water, uh, servants, of course, attending to the queen, uh, probably massage. I imagine if she was kind of a party in Queen. There may be uh, lots of people enjoying food and wine and that kind of thing around around the, the Queen's bath here. The structure is sort of surrounded by, uh, the bath is sort of inside and then there's a kind of a walled structure that uh, encloses the whole area. It's um, has really beautiful uh, sort of landscaped uh, grounds at this point. I'm sure that they've, uh, you know, fancied it up a little bit since it uh, became a ruin, but uh, it's really in a great peaceful place. It's not directly in the uh, royal complex. It's separate, or at least outside of that sort of complex. So this is the royal enclosure. So this area basically had a roof on it back in the 1500s. <clears throat> so what I'm told was that this is used mostly for festivals. The king would uh, once a year come down and he would give all of the um, common folks gifts um, at that time. You can see these lovely carvings all along this platform here. Just, just all the intricate work <clears throat> that was done uh, in the stone. So the history of Hampi goes back, uh, I think, to the 11th century, and uh, you know, it was the uh, one of the most powerful cities on the planet. <clears throat> By uh, many accounts, it was the second largest city uh, after Beijing on the planet, huge uh, metropolis uh, city that was uh, fortified. So it was encircled with about 60 miles uh, of wall. And it had seven concentrically uh, oriented towards the center of the city core. Each of those walled uh, groves supported different commerce and trade. Some of those were 
uh, growing crops and trading. Some were diamonds and gold, that kind of thing. In the 1500s, the city was basically sacked and destroyed by uh, Muslim sultans. They all got together and basically destroyed the city, uh, ruined it, brought it down to rubble basically, um, drove out all the inhabitants, and there was nothing left. It's just so surprising that a city of that caliber uh, could be basically reduced to nothing. Hampi was the seat of power for the Vijayanagara Empire and uh, lasted hundreds of years. Oh, this is a, a black stone step well. It's called uh, Pushkarani. And this was filled with water. The water was brought in daily in these sort of sloughs that were uh, constructed here out of stone. They'd bring the water in from here. Water would travel down and then fill this step well. So from what I understand, the stone in these step wells didn't exist in this region. So it was probably brought from somewhere else and constructed. They say these were probably used for religious purposes. Okay, well this is the Hazara Ramachandra Temple. Uh, I'm told that this is, temple is dedicated to um, Ramazahira. <laughs> I'm totally getting it wrong, but it's uh, basically a Sri Lankan um, uh, a story, uh, kind of a mythological story. Uh, the whole temple's dedicated to it. It just basically means thousands of carvings. Uh, but the story, apparently, according to my tuk-tuk driver, is so complicated that Westerners just don't just don't understand or can't understand because it's so uh, fanciful and unbelievable. And you can tell there's just a tremendous amount of carvings that are still really uh, actively you know, visible. They haven't been eroded or chipped away too much. They're just amazing. I mean, how much, all of this is just carved in stone, you know, and it's uh, thousands of years old. It's really nice here. It's a Monday, you know, there's like nobody here. So it's really nice not having to fight the crowds, you know. Yeah, this apparently is telling a story of uh, what I alluded to earlier, but the stonework is just amazing, you know. Well, this is the, uh, this is referred to as the underground Shiva temple. So when this site was excavated, uh, they, they really didn't know this was here until they came across the roof. All of this temple was buried <coughs> underneath the mud. And so it, they excavated it and it sort of became known as the underground Shiva temple. So this temple is close to the king's palace and it was basically used uh, primarily for the king's family. Uh, you can imagine the royal family make, sort of making their way down through here, you know, and uh, worshiping. And then on their way out, you know, you can find all of these carvings and it's a pretty amazing area. And to think that this is all sort of underneath the mud for hundreds of years and nobody even knew it existed. These gents in front of me were really happy to see uh, me and found my YouTube channel. Of course, these guys are subscribers to the channel. They found uh, Time Bomb 72. So if you like my videos, uh, like these guys do, and they felt it uh, important to watch my videos, then make sure you like and subscribe like these great guys. Very handsome fellas. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye. Bye. So this is the statue of uh, Narshima. It's the fourth incarnation of uh, Vishnu. And uh, probably the most handsome of all of the uh, Vishnu <laughs> incarnations. So this is the larger Krishna 
temple. You see this is uh, the size of this compared to the, the one reserved for the royal family. This is much more massive. You know, it goes all the way down there and you can see it's so sort of surrounded by the, all of these uh, external sort of walled area here. A lot of these temples are sort of constructed the same way with these stone pillars, you know, cut and carved. Each individual pillar carved in its own way, surrounding a sort of a central area. Um, generally, the uh, linga would be in the central area. Uh, you can see just the the detail in these places are, is really amazing. Here we have a just a massive statue of Ganesh. There's not really much to say about this spot except that it just has a big Ganesh. So there you are, your, your big Ganesh for today. Listen, I know what you're saying to yourself. Tim, look, all you've shown us is ruins and broken buildings and empty temples. Yeah, you're right get ready for a little bit of city action. So Hospet, which is kind of the city I'm in, Hospet is the literal term actually is uh, the market. So how about I give you a little taste of the city here that I'm experiencing. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time out at the ruins. Hampi is about 12 kilometers outside of the city. But you probably are saying to yourself, I want a little bit of some of that city. Well, here you go. This is Matanga Hill. It's about 520 some meters above the valley below. This is probably one of the best places to watch sunset and happy. Uh, climbing up here is a bit of a, a hike. I would say it would be a medium to strenuous uh, climb. Can be a bit of a scramble at times. And uh, the views up here are just amazing. I mean, it's hard to describe um, just how far you can see and uh, the landscape. It's almost you know, it's a kind of otherworldly feel to this. You know, all of these boulders and rocks and just mounds and piles of these massive boulders, you know, that have been here for, you know, millennia. Um, and uh, so it's not really like any other landscape you can find in other places. Uh, truly breathtaking, uh, definitely within the top three. If you're going to spend any time in Hampi, um, climbing up to this and watching the sunset is well worth the, you know, the extra effort it is to get up here. Uh, the views are spectacular and it gives you just a, just a wonderful view uh, of, of what's around you, uh, how significant of landscape that you are in is, and how just vast this area was. It still is. Well, I'm on my way to uh, Vitala Temple. So there's uh, this meets the road here, and there's a, probably a, oh, maybe a little less than a kilometer walk to the temple entrance. Uh, you can ride a little golf cart uh, for the, uh, the trip there. I figured I'd take, take the walk. It's a beautiful area that surrounds uh, the grounds here, but uh, I'm happy to walk it um, and take in some of the sights on my way there. So this is known as the Kudur Gombi Mantaba or horse figure pavilion. It's uh, from the 16th century and uh, you can tell why it's called the horse pavilion. Obviously there's these lovely sculptures here of the horses. 
all of these large marketplaces needed a, a source of fresh water for all the people that were doing commerce here. You know, this particular area was dedicated to gold and diamonds. And so traders would come around from all over the world and trade their gold and their diamonds and for any other goods. Um, this is where that would happen. And like I had mentioned before, you know, Hampi was the second largest city on the planet. They're probably estimated to be about 500,000 inhabitants here in this uh, sort of seven uh, layered concentrically oriented city uh, and this being just one of those areas uh, that would deal in gold and diamonds. The Tala temple here. Well if you look closely at the Indian 50 rupee note uh, you'll see the chariot that uh, it's based off of. So this is in the Vaitala uh, temple. This is, of course, what you'll see when you pull out your 50 rupee note. This is from the uh, 12th or 13th century. Uh, I was told previously that these stone wheels actually would move uh, by pushing them. Uh, the ticket office mentioned that uh, there's a front part of the chariot that's broken and that's why the wheels don't move anymore. Now this site is just really huge and it has a ton to offer. If you love these sort of uh, really ornately uh, pillared uh, temples that Hampi is so known for, you know, there's just such a huge number of this and the carvings are just are just pretty fantastic. Hampi is one of those places that, uh, you know, you have treasure inside of a treasure inside of a treasure. So if you look behind me, you can see all of these hills and boulders. This is what makes this area so sort of starkly beautiful. You find these archaeological treasures like the Vitala temple here within such natural beauty as well. And that's what makes Hampi such a special place uh, is that you continually find layers. So this arch here is what's known as the King's Balance. And what they would do is once a year they'd have the King on one side and they would stack up a pile of diamonds and gold on the other. And once it reached equilibrium, they would take all the gold and all the diamonds on one side and give it to the poor and the needy. Once a year they would do this. Well, this is the Lotus Mahala. Mahala is just a sort of an Indian word for, oh, the equivalent would be basilica or uh, just sort of a multi-purpose building. And you can imagine, you know, this was uh, hundreds of years ago, it would have been plastered and painted and it would have been fairly, you know, imposing a structure, you know, two-story structure. Um, with these really ornate uh, openings in the doorway. It's quite beautiful now, and I'm sure it would have been amazing uh, then. The elephant stables are really uh, basically where the royals kept their elephants, and you could basic you can see where each stall, you know, you'd you'd have an elephant. These were, uh, I guess, it's sort of conflicting whether. They uh, is where the elephants that they rode around on, or if these were for parades or sort of the uh, showmanship, or if they were fighting, uh, I'm not quite sure. But this is one of the best maintained areas in terms of its uh, what's left. And you can see each individual stall, you know, you, they would walk the elephant in. And this is where the elephant would stay and be fed and, and cared for.
Yeah, Hampi is so sort of unevenly developed at this point. You have these areas like the elephant stables that have, you know, basically been protected and restored and have lots of, uh, you know, attention to them. And then you have spots like this that are still incredibly important uh, to view. And, and you wonder kind of what the remnants are previously, uh, but, you know, still haven't been restored to their former glory or beauty. Uh, their time will come, I think. Well, if you have more than a, a day or two to visit Hampi, it's worth heading up to Anjanati, which is north of Hampi. Uh, Hampi. It's probably about 30 kilometers north of Hampi, and it's on the other side of the river. Um, it's a, definitely a slower pace, less touristy, uh, but some really just amazing sort of natural beauty here. So this is the Tonga Bajra River behind me. This river is a lifeline for this uh, valley, the Hampi Valley. That's why it's so productive agriculturally. You know, during the monsoon season, they have large dams. They basically store up all that water and it's used for drinking water, for agriculture. So uh, 12 months out of the year, you know, they have uh, just lots of water for different types of agriculture. <laughs> There's a temple complex up here called Chintamati. Uh, this is a, a 15th century uh, ashram uh, previously and uh, it has lots of really interesting historical architecture and it's worth a visit. Well, I'm at uh, Durgar Temple. People here are incredibly nice and curious. Of course, most of these places you go to in Hampi, the people that you meet are going to be really kind and and thoughtful and interested and of course the kids always want to say hello and practice their English with you. I'm always surprised at how well they can converse in the basic conversation of hello, how are you? Where are you from? <laughs> hello, 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 hello. One of the popular reasons to visit Dugar Temple is uh, there's a cave tunnel uh, behind the temple complex and uh, I think this gives you a chance to make your way through uh, the the boulders that you've seen around Hampi uh, into this really cool cave passage and then out the other side of course when you get out the other side you're welcome to ring the bell so the monkey temple there are 575 steps to get up here and once you arrive to the top it, you're just surrounded by this view that's spectacular, almost 365 uh, degree view of the valley below. Again, you can see just the, just the magnificence of, of uh, the Hampi Valley and how many boulders and, and uh, the area that's so green and lush uh, around us. The people are lovely, of course. Everybody wants to say hello and take your picture and wonder where you're from, which is always fun. We definitely... Uh, recommend uh, making your way up to Monkey Temple if you want to enjoy the view. This is just offers spectacular views of the, the valley below. Well, after the, the climb up to the Monkey Temples, it's nice to get out here and some places a little bit more serene with a little bit cooler air and fewer people. We're at Sanapur Lake and uh, we're going to take one of these little coracle boat rides out onto the lake. Uh, you can negotiate a price for a half hour, an hour, uh, four hours, two days, four months. You could even live out here if you wanted to. No, not really. Usually it's a half hour, an hour ride. Um, and uh, you ride in these little, these sort of uh, rounded boats. You float out onto the river and they take you out there and bring you back. And it's just really peaceful and quiet out here. You have a nice cool breeze off the water. And the sun goes down again in Hampi. The, the one thing that I continue to get reminded of here is just how layered the beauty is in this place. You have the ruins which have their own history and, and their own beauty with the carvings and, and all that's associated with that. And you have that within this landscape that is so different and stark from anything else 
that you can see anywhere else in the world. And these rocks, you know, bear witness to the, 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 the hundreds and thousands of years that have passed in this valley and how many millions of sunsets and sunrises have these rocks witnessed. It's an amazing place that everybody should see at least once. I think that um, the beauty of a place like this sticks with you and, and I'm sure that I'll carry a part of Hampi in my heart when I leave. This place is uh, hard to get to, but easy to remember.